So, uh, you might have a weakness in the way you transmit the credentials because um, people might be observing your network traffic. They could be on the same wireless network. They could be in your ISP or at the other end on the IT department hosting the application. You know, if you send traffic over the internet, it goes to a lot of different devices, any of which might snoop on it. Now, if you were sending it without encryption, of course, like HTTP or FTP, then any of those people could steal it. But that's not very common these days. Almost everybody has figured that out and upgraded to HTTPS. But even if you're using HTTPS, it might be handled insecurely after it reaches the server. Um, now, I see my Twitch page freezing up. Let me try refreshing mine see if that fixes it. Uh, yep, so other people are getting a choppy signal there. My seems okay now. Uh, is it okay now, folks? Uh, tell me in the chat. I refreshed mine and it seemed okay. I'm going to pause until I... Okay, people say it's okay now. All right. Well, I guess it was some temporary internet problem, probably Comcast. Anyway, um, so if you send the credentials to the server and um, they're in the query string, remember up here, uh, all right, let's see why I can't get to my, there we are, like up here in the URL, you can have a question mark ID equals Sam, that sort of thing. If you put it up there, then it's going to be stored in the logs on the server and in the browser history and in logs of reverse proxies and so on. So I mentioned before, that's not safe. Even if you put it in a post data, it might get redirected to another page in the query string. So that's the thing. The data might be handled insecurely after it's securely delivered to the server. Um, it might store credentials in cookies, which is not a good idea. Um, if you have something like a password or username in plain text in the cookie, you can read it. And even if its cookie is just a random number, you can remember the cookie and replay it. And if I can steal the cookie off of your phone, for example, with malware, I can then get in your account. And that's a big risk. Um, all right. And it used to be pretty common that pages would open by HTTP and then redirect to HTTPS. And that's vulnerable because you can intercept the HTTP part and redirect it to a different spot. Uh, that is still pretty common, even though it's been at least 15 years. People should have known better than to do that. All right, and then there's password change. This is often a problem. The, the place you go to update your password, um, you do need to update. A lot of people like periodic password changes. It was recommended by the US government, but about a year or two ago, they rescinded that and said, you know, it turns out making people update their password every 30 or 90 days just makes everything worse. <laughs> Yeah, CCS of Canvas, I think, did used to do that. A lot of people do that, HTTP to HTTPS. Anyway, um, users do need to change their password when they want to, or when they think somebody knows, sees their password. But um, And when that happens, the password change system is often poorly designed. For example, you could say, um, change your password, put in your username, your current password, and the new password, and then it might tell you if the username is wrong. Well, then you can use it to enumerate usernames. Or it might let you, if you put in the existing password and it's wrong, it might tell you that and not have a lockout on that page, even if there's a lockout on the main login page. So you could use the password change page to do a brute force attack on the password. Someone says, why is it worse? Um, I don't know what you're referring to, what's worse, though. But uh, the password change system tends to be worse because they just tend to overlook these security things. Um, all right, and another, and it might your your if you write your code to be efficient, your code might test things in order, and it might test the username, and if it's wrong, then stop. If the um, oh why, yeah, uh, forcing password resets tend to be worse. Yeah, because then people exactly what you think. Then people resort to doing stuff like incrementing numbers or things like that. Yes, that's what happens. Um, a last past account getting compromised and a new breach happened. Well, I haven't heard of that, but certainly if someone is able to get in your last pass account, they get in everything. Anyway, so um, if you do validate everything on this page that has username, old password, and new password, 
then there would be a timing difference depending on what's wrong and often a different error message and uh, so on so uh, this is what you ought to do to do a password change you identify the user validate existing password check about account lockout then compare the new passwords to make sure they're good and then only feedback an error condition after you've tested everything but there are often flaws um, the forgotten password functionality is often a weak link because you don't want to pay for your help desk to do some kind of high quality verification of the user. So you take something else like your mother's maiden name or something, which is extremely weak. Most people can figure that out by going to online databases or something. And um, that's often very weak. Uh, if you let people write their own questions, they'll often write foolish questions like what color was my boat? question with yes no answers or question with a small set of answers and if you allow password hints there was a big breach a few years ago maybe it was target where the passwords were hashed but the password hints were in the clear text and most of the password hints were just equal to the password <laughs> so password hints are pretty poor practice um, yep yep and uh, all right so uh, often the the way you reset the password after a correct challenge answer is vulnerable. Sometimes you can recover your lost password, which indicates that they're storing it in the clear. If you get it right, it'll then give your old password back. I know Yahoo was that way for a long time. I don't know if they still are. Um, anyway, uh, some people just let you write in after the challenge with no password. These are all, you know, lots of foolish mistakes are made. Um, all right. Now, sometimes you it sends you an email with a password with a password reset link, which is a pretty good practice, but sometimes they will let you change the email address. And then, of course, I can go in somebody else's account to change it to my email address, and I can get a password reset for their account. Um, all right. And sometimes, if you do a reset, it doesn't inform the user. A good system will tell you with an email every time something happens. Somebody changed your password, somebody got locked out from too many bad guesses, all these sort of things. You ought to know when that happens in case it's somebody else doing it. A Yahoo Mail can still be accessed by the phone number stored in the email account. Yeah? Yep. Yeah. Without a password? <laughs> that would be harsh. Anyway, um, without any password. Oh, oh. Well, that, that probably implies that it's using the, um, the from address in the phone call. Um, phone caller ID and that can be spoofed <coughs> you know that's how the uh, news of the world under Rupert Murdoch in Britain hacked into all the journalists email accounts they um, they knew that you could get into anybody's voicemail by just making the phone call appear to come from their email from their phone number and then you didn't need any passwords you could just listen to everybody's voicemail all the time all right, then there's a remember me functionality where you check a box and after you log in, it will remember who you are. Yes, he got in big trouble for that. Absolutely. I think the whole company went got shut down or something. Um, so sometimes you have a simple cookie like remember user with a username or a session number. But this would mean if it's something this simple, then I can guess what it would be for some other user. I can guess this username. I can guess a different session number and then I'll be somebody else. It really should be a long, complex, random number where you, a um, very small amount of those possible numbers are valid. And if I try guessing numbers, I won't find another valid number. All right. Um, even if the token is unpredictable or encrypted, you can steal it by cross-site scripting or by stealing your phone or putting malware on your phone. And once I've got it, I can then impersonate you. Now, sometimes... On some systems, your help desk people want to impersonate users. I'm actually not sure why you would need this. I would tend to think that you've got a poorly designed system if you think you need to do this. But um, somebody asking if something is brute force too, but I'm not sure what you're referring to. A combination? Well, you can certainly brute force these, um, these cookies and stuff if they're short enough. But if they're long enough, then you can slow down brute forcing. Um, anyway, you, there often is some kind of function to impersonate a user. And that's, of course, a high value target. Another thing a lot of people do is they have a secret backdoor um, help desk account. 
Hmm, I'm seeing my thing freeze up again. All right, I'm going to stop the stream briefly and restart it to see if that helps. So I'll be back in a few seconds. seen this before and it's usually a twitch session could not access the thing there may be a problem connecting to the server ah now it might be good aha uh, maybe not well let's see I suspect this is a Twitch problem. Yep, looks like it's okay now. Uh, okay. Yeah, refresh your browser and the blur might go away. It looks okay now. Let's see if it keeps working. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, Twitch sort of died partway through and we had to switch to Zoom. So tell me in the chat if it gets bad again and maybe I'll have to switch to Zoom. Anyway, um, all right. And so this fixed backdoor password, Cisco had that problem like eight times in the last couple of years. Uh, they had backdoor passwords. They apparently had a tradition of doing that. <laughs> All right. And so sometimes the password is not used completely. This was certainly true of, I think, Windows 98. It would only use like the first eight letters or six letters. And Microsoft Hotmail only uses the first 16 letters. Whatever you type after that, it doesn't use it. This is a, a poor idea. And it also indicates, again, that you're probably storing the password in plain text because if you were hashing it like you should be, then this restriction would not make any sense. And, all right, yeah, I don't know. Looks like it's low quality again there. All right, uh, sometimes you can have two accounts with the same username, and that might confuse it. Yes, I did find non-unique usernames at Phil's Coffee but I tried to exploit them and I was unable to exploit them and I concluded that there was a hidden user account number that was different for the different accounts. Yep, good. I appreciate the feedback in the chat. All right. Then, of course, there's predictable usernames like uh, just your first letter, your first name, and some letters from your last name or just counting numbers. And some people make predictable initial passwords. You make all the accounts and all the accounts start with the same password. And sometimes you distribute the credentials to start you off insecurely, like sending them by email or something, and users never change them. Um, so, you know, what's better is to force you to change it. You know, you have some kind of initial password, but you have to change it the first time you get in. I know City College used to use the student's birthday as their password. And, of course, you could pretty much guess that, especially since there are so many students. Anyway. Uh, looks like it's freezing up again, turning blurry. People say it looks fine. Okay. Well, anyway. All right. Let's try a Kahoot and see how that works. One good thing about the Kahoots is they go through a different non-Twitch channel. So they'll probably stay high quality even if the Twitch is not high quality. Okay. Okay, good. I appreciate the feedback. Oh, yes. One of my clients has horrible password policies. A lot of corporations have horrible password policies. My impression is they have password policies that were established years ago and never updated.
Oh, good. I figured out who TV is, so that's good. All right. Yep. Yep, yep, it froze up there a bit. Yeah, well, let's do the cahoots. And after that, maybe I better switch to Zoom. It looks like Twitch is not working. Pretty sure these problems are caused by Twitch. That's what it was in the past. All right, looks like we got enough players. All right, so what would HTTPS stop? Yep, the only one of those that will stop is eavesdropping. All the rest happen after it reaches the server. All right, so which one uses a simple persistent cookie? Yeah, remember me? Ah, I see some indicators in the OBS suggesting that it is dropping a lot of frames. Okay. All right, which one is insecure because it doesn't validate the fields in the correct order? All right, the password change is the one with a lot of different fields, which can be in the wrong order. All right, and here's the last one of the cahoots. All right, which one might use a backdoor password? Okay, that's impersonation. All right. So let me see who won. All right, I don't know who that is. I know who that is, though, S squared. And I know that's a good name. All right, so I've got the winners recorded, such as they are. And it's time... Let me stop this recording.